Our next guest is Congressman Sam Graves, ranking member of the House Transportation Infrastructure Committee and a Republican from Missouri. Congressman, thanks for being with us. Uh, let, let me start with some news of the day, Congressman, on the rail strike. Uh, do you think, what are your thoughts of it generally, and do you think that Congress should get involved before this Friday deadline? It is the number one issue in transportation this week. Well, if Congress gets involved, that'll obviously avoid a strike. Um, if we have a strike, it's going to, uh, you know, have a devastating impact all over the, uh, uh, all over the country, and you know, it's gonna, it's gonna just stop up the entire um, supply chain. So it's, you, you know, we need to do everything we can uh, to avoid a strike. I would like to see, um, see all parties accept the, uh, uh, the resolution, um, the recommendations. Um, that would be the best avenue forward. Um, unfortunately, I think that uh, uh, Speaker Pelosi is going to punt this thing down the road, and she's going to, uh, uh, you know, she's going to try to, uh, uh, you know, extend the cooling off period till after the election, which would be the most devastating thing ever because that means everybody starts from square one. It all starts all over again, and and uh, all of those original agreements are going to, uh, you know, are going to go away. They're going to tear them up and start all over. Congressman, on transportation, this used to be more, and you've been working on this for years, it used to be more of a bipartisan issue. The, the infrastructure bill uh, just had over a dozen Republicans in the House vote for it. Um, why has this become more of a, a partisan issue, and, and what were your main concerns uh, with the, the infrastructure now law? Well, the biggest concern is the fact that it's not paid for. I mean, we completely went outside what the original premise was, and, and that is the highway bill. Um, you know, we were trying to stay within, we've always tried to stay within those guardrails, and that is the money that's provided for highway construction, highway and bridge construction coming from um, the uh, gas tax or from the highway trust fund. Um, we walked completely away from that, and there was no pay for us. And it turned into an extraordinarily partisan process, and by doing that, then ultimately the House was completely blocked out of it and, and uh, the Senate bill was just accepted. We could have passed something that could have competed with the Senate bill, come together in conference and come up with a much, much better bill. Um, but for whatever reason, the Democrats have decided to go completely partisan. Um, and the Transportation Committee has always traditionally been a very bipartisan uh, committee. And it's unfortunate that, uh, um, you know, that we've seen this turn. As far as the record inflation, do you, do you blame the infrastructure law as well as the uh, uh, IRA uh, legislation that was just signed into law? Listen, that you don't fix inflation by spending money. That's not how you do it. Um, you don't put more cash out there. Um, all that does is make inflation uh, a lot worse. And, you know, unfortunately, the administration and the leadership in, in um, on the majority side right now, uh, they want to pretend that this isn't happening, but it's having real world impacts on folks. Folks are going to have to, families are going to have to spend 6,000 more per year, uh, you know, just due to inflation. And you look what's happening with um, construction costs. We're seeing it's a lot worse than the 8.3 that families are having to deal with. In construction, you're seeing 12, over 12% 12 uh, for just general construction costs. And if you look at specifically for materials for highways and bridges, um, it's over 15%. And what that's doing is it's cutting back now. You're seeing, um, you know, organizations, uh, whether that be municipalities, counties, you know, uh, uh, states, they're cutting back on the projects that they originally were trying to do just because of the inflation factor. Uh, as far as, as you know, we've got a midterm election uh, upcoming, and uh, most independent political uh, handicappers uh, think you, and, and I am among them, that you will win back the House. Uh, what would be, if that happens, what would be your transportation priorities? Well, we've got two or three. First of all, we're going to have to provide oversight on the money that's going out um, with the infrastructure bill. Um, it's the law of the land now. Uh, and when you're pushing, you know, $1.2 trillion out the door, there need, there's a potential for uh, waste and fraud uh, and abuse. And so we're going to provide oversight. We're also going to make sure that the letter of the law is followed, that, that, you know, the bill provided for one federal decision to streamline projects uh, into two-year approval uh, process. We want to make sure that that is followed. We also want to make sure that states have the flexibility uh, to be able to add, uh, add lanes, add capacity. Um, the administration has put out, you know, a directive to the states that uh, uh, discouraging them from adding uh, adding new lanes, uh, which is unfortunate. And we've also got the FAA reauthorization that's coming right behind it. 
Um, we've got to get that done next year. And, uh, you know, very important bill, um, something that uh, we're going to be, uh, uh, you know, starting to work on right after the first of the year. And, uh, and then, of course, after that, we'll have, you know, word and some of the other uh, reauthorizations that we have to do. Uh, based upon the political climate, are you confident you're going to win back the House? Um, I never count my chickens before I ha they hatch. <laughs> and so I'm just going to get through the election and hope everybody gets through the election. And, and uh, I'm cautiously optimistic. But uh, you never know. Um, you never know. And, and what do we have six weeks to the election? It's an eternity uh, in politics. So uh, you just never know what's going to happen. Uh, your home state is getting, I believe, close to 12 million uh, from, from the infrastructure. What are, what are the needs uh, of Missouri? What, 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 where should that money be spent? What are the, the biggest concerns right now at the local level? Well, the, the legislature is doing a very good job, and the governor, Governor Parson, has done a very good job of figuring out how to move forward with infrastructure projects and then get them paid for. Um, this was ahead of the, the infrastructure bill. So we're seeing uh, some real good work being done by Missouri. In, in fact, just to give you a specific, um, they're moving $100 million to rural roads, what we call letter droughts. Uh, in Missouri, which are very important to uh, to our rural constituents, and, and uh, they're just literally falling apart. And as a result of some federal dollars coming in, we've been able to um, supplant uh, dollars, and, and that opened up money for uh, uh, for these rural roads. So that's a great example. Um, they're going to continue to do a good job of, of giving up that money, but um, increased capacity is a big part of it. We we are you know bogged down on I-70 with the amount of traffic that that runs through uh, the state of Missouri. So I know they're looking at uh, at doing that. Uh, as another, we've got a couple of bridge projects um, we're continuing to work on in both Kansas City and in uh, uh, across the Missouri River by Columbia, Missouri. So uh, a lot of a lot of work that's out there that. Uh, um, that, uh, you know, they're working through that process, but we want to make sure the money is spent on, on traditional infrastructure, you know, mm -hmm. roads and bridges. Uh, as far as uh, your relationship with uh, the, uh, Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, uh, I've talked to a lot of ranking members over the years, especially when they're dealing with an administration that's not in their party, and they have a difficult time uh, getting some cabinet secretaries to, to respond when they're ranking member, less so when they're chairman. Um, is your relationship with the secretary pretty good? He's been pretty responsive to you or no? Um, yeah, he has. Um, you know, and I got to say, you know, he is uh, he's been very responsive. We had lunch um, together. Uh, I guess it was just before we left for August break. And, uh, you know, he has been very accessible. He's called me on a couple of occasions to ask uh, ask my opinion. Um, so he's he's been good. The administration hasn't been so good. Um, you know, they called for bipartisanship and and uh, and talked a good game, but but nothing came from it. Um, but I have to say, Secretary Buttigieg is, has been uh, uh, has been very accessible. Um, you know, he's a nice individual, pleasant individual to uh, to visit with. So uh, I can't say uh, anything bad about you know his accessibility, at least to me. Mm -hmm. Do you think? Uh, last question. Do you think uh, that the Biden White House will pivot? Mitch McConnell has said that that Biden will become more moderate if the House and or Senate flip. Do you, do you agree with that? Uh, you know, it's it's tough to say. And, and I got to say, um, President Biden is not the same Joe Biden that, that used to serve in the Senate. This is a extraordinarily partisan uh, individual. Again, he talks a great game. Um, he brought us all in when we started the infrastructure process. He brought us all in and, and uh, wanted our ideas, you know, sat there and, and listened to us. And then literally just walked away from the table and said, we can't work with with Republicans. Um, and then, of course, the House followed suit uh, right behind that. So, it, you know, it's it's a, it, here's an individual that has gone extremely partisan. And, and uh, I suppose if he's trying to salvage a little bit from his administration, if Republicans do take over, um, you know, he might go down that road. But I think he's being pressured pretty hard by uh, the extreme far left, and and he's walking right into that uh, into that trap, and and uh, and it's hurting him, it's hurting his record, it's hurting the administration, and and uh, the country's suffering for it. Congressman, we run out of time. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you, absolutely.